I'm Julianne DeLynn Hatton, and you're listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. This series will discuss the Prophet Joseph Smith and the authenticity of the gospel he restored. I'll be speaking with Michael R. Ash, author of the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Welcome, Michael Ash. Hi, Julianne. Tonight we'll be talking about a very interesting topic, angels and books. Yes, it is an interesting topic. So basically, that's what the Book of Mormon is about, angels and books. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, if it wasn't for the two, there wouldn't be the Book of Mormon. We uh, wouldn't have the restoration that we have. That's right. Let's get some background on how Joseph Smith received the plates from the angel Moroni. Okay. Well, Joseph had... After his first vision, um, he prayed at a point there to want to know kind of his standing before for God, and uh, the angel Moroni appeared and showed him in a vision that these plates were buried in the hill that we, we now call the Hill Camorra, and uh, eventually led Joseph there and let Joseph look inside, uh, uncovered the, the plates, and he could see them in there. But it was uh, a few years later before he was actually able to recover them. Moroni would uh, have basically yearly interviews with Joseph until he finally allowed Joseph to uh, retrieve the plates. And then, of course, when he did, Joseph was given basically revelation through a couple of different devices in order to translate those plates into the Book of Mormon. What is it about Joseph Smith receiving the plates from an angel that bothers people? Well, it, it, it just sounds weird for most people. In fact, critics have said you don't get books from angels. Uh, that, that's actually a, a quote from uh, one critic that was very vocal about uh, Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon. And it, it just didn't, for most people, make sense um, that there was a, a need for books or for angels to bring those books. And uh, and it's unfortunate that those people that make those criticisms really aren't very knowledgeable with what other type of evidences, even in the Bible, are out there for angels and books. Let's talk about the concept of angels and books in a non-Western frame. There, there's a scholar, Near Eastern scholar, by the name of Brett McNeely, and, he, and he's written on this a little bit. And he pointed out, and it's interesting because this is pointed out in the 21st century, so it, it was not something that was obvious to people in Joseph Smith's day or, or even for, you know, decades afterwards. But there's a theme of books coming from a divine source. And we actually find hints of this even in the Bible. He, he, even in, uh, in Exodus, of course, you know, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and he received this book, the plates, this record that was written by the finger of God in uh, Ezekiel. In Revelation, we read about uh, how the prophets uh, were commanded to eat the scroll. And, and this is not plates, but still it's a book. And it symbolized that they were uh, internalizing this message. And then they were told to share these types of things. In a pseudepigraphic book that goes by the name of First Enoch that was very important to the early Jewish community, we read that an angel commanded that Enoch look at these tablets from heaven and read that was written on them and then share them with others. And, and there was even an early Christian book by the name of, uh, it was called Vision of Hermas. And, and in this book, Hermas saw this, this woman who had a robe and brought a book and uh, asked if he wanted to hear her read from it, and she did, and it was important teachings, and then, you know, said you need to teach these to the elect of God. And we find the same theme even in the Book of Mormon, without it even going to Joseph Smith. In the first chapter of Nephi, in verse 11, Lehi sees in a vision a book as well, and, and he, uh, he sees this vision open up, and he sees a spirit, and, and he talks about one descending from the midst of heaven, and in verse 11 it says, And they came down and went forth upon the face of the earth, and the first came and stood before my father, being Lehi, and gave unto him a book, and bade that he should read it. And he was filled with the spirit, and again he wanted to share this. So this theme seems to run through uh, ancient culture, uh, in the biblical culture, and that's, of course, where Lehi would have come from. And then we find it, of course, with Joseph Smith, the exact same theme taking place. And, and like I said, if somebody had been digging for this, like this scholar Brent McNeely did, he was able to find these threads and these hints of it everywhere, but nobody had noticed it uh, uh, before then. So it, it's unlikely that Joseph Smith 
of course, he didn't have access to some of this other ancient literature, but even from the Bible, he never made mention of it. None of his contemporaries did, whether critics or believers. So it's unlikely that uh, he noticed it himself. But it's just one more evidence, in my opinion, that the Book of Mormon follows a pattern that ties it to actual ancient scripture. Thank you, Michael Ash. Thank you, Julianne. Thanks for listening to Faith and Reason on the Mormon Faircast. I'm your host, Julianne DeLynn Hatton, inviting you to keep the faith. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book, Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Faith and Reason is produced by Tom Hatton with music courtesy of Arthur Hatton. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of Fair Mormon or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You can support this podcast by subscribing to it in iTunes and by rating it and writing a review. Questions or comments can be sent to podcast at fairmormon.org or you may join the conversation at fairblog.org. 